Hey, what's up, y'all? Royal Vaughn. Yes, I'm so excited for you. Let's see. Get the bowl in my lap here. Got some papaya. Big old two kilo papaya. Spud shot. Hola, twin. Great to see you again. Been eating papaya all day. This one tastes like carbol. Straight up brown sugar. Look at that. Look at my eyes. So beautiful lately. <laughs> my eyes have never looked this good. I'm not being narcissistic. That's just. An observation. Pixie's healing. Hello. Yes, you can definitely get drunk on fruits um, when you improperly food combine. When you eat foods, eat fruits that have been sitting too long, old fruits sitting in the sun. I had a fermented papaya. Not yeah, good. People don't realize that. A lot of people don't realize they're eating fermented food. Fermentation is not good. Feeds candida. Thank you, Spirit. I've been getting a lot of sun these past few days and solar gazing, so it's probably helping my eyes too. Raw fruit elf. Hey. Harry. Great to see you, bro. The sun has been out the past few days. Not much rain. It's beautiful. And he walks. Hello. You guys like papaya? I made Kuching, Malaysia. Wow, this color, it's like a sunset orange red. It's beautiful. It's like half orange, half red. Move that live. That's what I'm talking about. Get sweating, get exercising. That hydration going. But the oxid detox, I love it. Hello, Casey. How y'all do it today? Is it nighttime where you are? Cause it's like five o'clock here. I uh, just checked in some guests to the hostel and now I'm chilling. Ate like six papayas today. Couple dragon fruit. I'm about to go on the papaya diet until uh, durian shows up. Oh my gosh, this is a big piece. A 
Well, it depends on the variety. They vary in size. I've had I had a really small one today. Yeah, like the size of a mango. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Why would you not want to eat this? Oh, a papaya farm in Miami. That sounds amazing. See, if I lived in America, I would live in Florida. I think that's one of the best places to be, like, fruitarian. No, I don't ever get tired of fruit. Are you kidding me? Especially in the tropics. Flavors are so complex out here. Keep you satisfied. Super high energy. Like you don't you don't crave anything else. Even back in the States, I just I just love fruit. Love everything about it. The reproductive organs of fruiting plant tree. I don't do the lime over the papaya anymore because I've learned that uh, when you mix lime with sweet fruits that it causes fermentation. We were talking about fermentation earlier. Del Rey, is that in the south? Because I heard you got to be in the south. Oh, tamarind, tamarind passion fruit, coconuts. Hey, Casey. Big moves. I didn't get a coconut today. I couldn't find one. It was weird. I was sweating so hard, too. I was like, dying for one. So I just ate tons of papaya, dragon fruit. Six papayas today. You believe that? <laughs> Only cost me like five dollars. I'm seriously considering it, just doing papayas mostly until durian comes in like a week or two. Get my digestion super on point. Oh my gosh, Spirit. I was going to talk to you about saunas. I was going to recommend that, actually. That's awesome. I would definitely get that if I was in a cold climate. Are you kidding? My friend got me into saunas. He goes every day in the UK, and he's, like, juicing every day. Really inspirational. Flavors of Light on uh, Instagram. And, and YouTube. That guy's like my... He's a soldier, man. Coffee drinker? No, I haven't drank coffee in like eight years. I've always been really super sensitive to caffeine. Um, I used to get these like chai lattes with like a shot of espresso, maybe like once a blue moon. But it made me so messed up, like it it really screwed with me. So yeah, I, I was more into tea. Herbal tea, not really caffeinated. B12, uh, you can get it from insects. It's actually made from bacteria. So if you're eating any dirty foods like that have dirt on it, you're getting B12. The problem is that people wash everything and they're so like antibacterial, they use antibacterial soap and stuff. 
That's why they're washing away the good bacteria with the bad bacteria, and that's why they're B12 deficient. And even if they get B12, they can't absorb it properly because their guts are so messed up. And people who have these acidic guts, they can't absorb B12 no matter how much they take. But yeah, vegetables, B12, you get from vegetables. Hmm. An enlarged sinus? I never heard of that. I'm not sure. Gus. They don't let me go live on YouTube. I don't re meet the requirements. How did this journey start? What journey? My whole life is a journey. <laughs> Can you be more specific? I've really tried the fruitarian diet, but it affected so badly my toilet time. What does that mean? More toilet time? Less toilet time? That's a good thing. You're getting toxins out of your body if you're going to the bathroom more. And if you're sick, that's good. It's getting rid of old toxins built up. It's not the diet's fault. It's things coming out from your previous diet, your acidic diet. They let you? Really? Oh, on, on desktop, right? Not on mobile. You, you can do it on mobile, Gus? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I don't have a laptop or a computer. I'm a very minimalist. <laughs> I have a five kilo backpack. Would not want to carry around that thing, that's for sure. Was it a natural progression? It felt pretty natural actually, yeah. Um, I started off vegetarian, of course, like for one month during the new year. I believe 2015. And then vegan for one month, just like eating all the vegan processed foods. And then I went like raw raw vegan for a month and a half eating all the gourmet raw stuff because I worked at a health food store and we had tons of that like really good raw desserts and kale salad and stuff but I wasn't feeling good on that so it was just more elimination and then eventually I tried a fruit diet for seven days uh, inspired by Dan McDonald and John Rose Check them out on YouTube, if you have it. Yeah, but what I could do, Gus, is I could go live on Instagram, save it, and then post it to YouTube. So, I know the super chats, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. Right, maybe once I get past 4,000 uh, 4, hours watch time, They'll give it to me. I don't know. Oh, maybe I could use the computer here. I don't know if they have webcam. Hello, everybody. What's up? Just be chilling. I was watching some Game of Thrones. I've been watching a lot of movies lately. I saw some really good ones. Uh, Joker, It Chapter 2. What's the other one? Oh, El Camino. Oh my god, El Camino was amazing.
fruits with more protein. Uh, well, first of all, we don't really need that much protein as humans. We only need like 10, 15% maybe. And uh, there are some with higher protein like durian, avocado, uh, watermelon. But every fruit has all the amino acids your body needs to make protein. So when you eat an abundance of fruits, you're going to get your 10% that's needed. El Camino was so good. I hope they make like a a sequel or another sort of Breaking Bad spinoff. That'd be so cool. A library. Oh, I should see if they have a library. I love libraries. Yeah, it's weird how like it says protein content when you look at nutritional facts on fruits, but they have amino acids, so I don't know how that works. I haven't seen Better Call Saul, because it's on, I think it's only on Netflix. Yo, yo Gus, let me get that Netflix password. See that? Sunset orange. So beautiful. It's like a different version of El Camino. I can't believe I ate six papaya today. Harry. <laughs> Harry's my guy. That's like my number one fan, I feel like. <laughs> He's always there. No, it's all good, dude. You don't have to <laughs> you don't have to give me your account. so good though. Like I never thought I'd be eating only papaya for a day. I'm gonna try it tomorrow too. Why not? Never been to the UK. I got a lot of friends out there. Definitely will at some point. Some random creeps. You have some random creeps Netflix? How does that work? Or no, UK. Is Spade in the UK? I'm so bad with geography. I really want to visit Spade. But UK, I think that's, that's like Great Britain, right? That's like cold place. I can't do cold, man. <laughs> Gus. I could see that. I could see that. And it's not just how a fruit tastes, like, how it makes you feel. It's a full, like, sensory experience. Trouble sleeping. Yeah. But usually when I don't eat enough, or when I'm fasting, if I, if I eat enough, I have no problem sleeping. Cold and rainy. 
Yeah, I don't mess with that. Where I'm from, it rains like 10 months out of the year. Highly realized. Hello. It's a cool name. Nothing better. Papaya. A non-seasonal tropical fruit. That means you can get it year-round. Yeah. We don't need X amount of hours of sleep. I slept on the floor yesterday for the first time in a long time. And I only slept for like five hours and had way more energy than I ever did sleeping like... 10, 12 hours on a mattress. So grateful I could do that again and like just sleep in my room naked, like be in private, have some private time, not living at a like not staying at a hostel. It's like I got my own little personal sauna in there, just sweating up. Access to hot and cold showers, like, so blessed. So grateful to be here. Yeah, oversleeping in a bed, like, your shoulders are jacked, like, and notice how when you sleep in a bed, you wake up, like, every two hours. But sleeping on the floor, like, you get a, a longer sleep, like, four or five hours, like, undisturbed, you know, because... Supposedly your body reacts to soft material leg on soft mother, soft material as a foreign object. So we're supposed to be laying on hard surfaces. <clears throat> yeah, I did the no pillow thing too now. I still like like hug one sometimes, but I'm getting better. Sleeping on the back is like, takes a lot of get of getting used to. Back in Washington, I would just camp out in my backyard, like throw down a sleeping bag and I just woke up to the birds every morning at like, I think 5.30 and then watch the sunrise. It was so beautiful. Yeah, chairs are making people weak, too. Sit on the floor or uh, do a squat, you know? Yeah, we don't need pillows. That really messes up your neck, and you're not getting proper blood flow to your brain at night. Good morning. Good afternoon here. Where are you chiming in from? Lakshi? Almost down to my last papaya piece. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, once you get good at floor sleeping, you're like, oh, I want to sleep on something harder and like, that's how like these Asians <laughs> just they'll just post up on like the concrete somewhere, just lay down for a a nap midday, and I'm like, props, like that's that's hardcore. I used to be jealous of people who could sleep on planes, like I could never sleep on a plane, but now I can. Sleeping vertically, like that's next level too. Chicago, that's kind of like Seattle, right? It's like windy and rainy and cold. Yes, exactly, Gus. And we have to have, like, gaps between our body and what we're laying on. If the bed conforms to you, that's, like, it's weakening you, really. Cold and windy. Well, stay warm out there. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but another thing is they might be so toxic that they, they can't even stay awake. No energy. Yeah, sleeping on your side, just like, I'm trying to get better at that. What am I eating today? Mostly papaya. I've had six papayas and two dragon fruits. Thank you, Lakshi. I know my eyes are like so beautiful these past few days. <laughs> I really gotta stop. Yeah, but get a lot of sun, it feels so good. Like at least an hour a day. Try not to spend too much time in the sun. Because it's super intense here. It's like 33 degrees. Uh, usually I'm out there during the midday. So it's pretty intense, pretty hardcore. Let's see my nose. Oh no, I'm not peeling. How much is papaya? Uh, it's like 75 cents a kilo. I got like seven papayas for like $5, $4.50. Yeah, I don't, it, yeah, it's Celsius. I forget America runs on Fahrenheit. <laughs> That, that weird system. It's so funny. The only... The only country not to run on Celsius. Or metrics. What fruit do I like the most? Uh, it's a hard question. It's a really hard question. If you've been out to the tropics and tried, like, a wide variety of fruits, it's like, it's really hard to pick. They're all incredible. And as frugivores, we could eat many varieties. It's the best part. Not just focus on one. Used to be durian. But, uh, yeah, not anymore. Champadak. It's got to be in my, my top, top five, top three, maybe. Champadak is like the most sweet fruit there is, super energizing. <sighs> yeah. Dubai is amazing. It's a jungle olive, like more fatty than an avocado. It tastes like salty, buttery mashed potatoes with thyme and oregano. Just did this one fruit, this little olive. It's the most insane thing ever. They're super expensive. You gotta come here to Malaysia in like December, January, and you can get them. My God, they are straight up like it's literally like eating mashed potatoes with butter and salt. No, I don't. I don't watch videos people have made about me. I appreciate their energy, though. Yeah, I'm kind of keeping the weight gain thing under wraps right now. I don't want to reveal too much yet. I want to show my results when I actually know what I'm talking about. You know. Did 100 push-ups yesterday, so I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, I've been doing a lot of inclined push-ups, decline. Inclined push-ups are amazing because you can get like the full range of motion. You don't have to, uh, it's better for beginners, so I'm still, I'm just really focusing on form. I'm not like 
focusing on a lot of repetition, just really getting the form down, going slow. Doing some door curls yesterday. Uh, just hanging from a pull-up bar. Really good uh, tricep extensions, dips. Uh, there's some other calisthenic stuff. Uh, oh, planks, a lot of planks, push-ups, yeah. Travel to Iran. Yes, definitely Iran. I heard they have amazing dates there. I met a guy from Iran and he was showing me all the fruits and I was like, oh, those look so good. But I don't think it's a good time to go there uh, right now. Form is super important. If you got shit form, you're gonna, your body's gonna turn to shit. The initial weakness. Uh... I don't know. You shouldn't be experiencing any weakness. How much are you eating per day? I have a feeling you're not eating enough. Red Boons, hello. How are you doing? Thank you guys for tuning in. Ate so much papaya today. Comment down below your favorite fruit. I want to know. Two coconuts, one watermelon, six oranges, and a box of tomatoes. Oh, Max, killing it, man. Killing it. Look at that, all that hydration, brother. You're moving, moving along. That lymphatic waste, man. Pineapple, ooh, yum. I gotta buy a pineapple. They're like $2 here. Really good pineapples. Oh my god. They have the white pineapples here. They're white on the inside. I still gotta try those. They're green on the outside when they're fully ripe. And they're white on the inside. Wonder what they taste like. Persimmons! Oh my god. I saw some persimmons today from Korea. And I was like, tempted. I was like, oh, I could buy those. But I'm like, oh no, I should probably eat local fruits. Local fruits are way more high quality. You know? Manzana bananas. Oh, those are so good, man. Gus, do you want the coconuts? Just the water? Or are you doing like a smoothie sort of thing? Lychee durian. Hey, Julie. Where are you at? Are you in Thailand? Or, uh... Lychee. Where are lychees in season right now? I haven't seen those in a while. Yeah, you gotta get the soft persimmons. Yeah, US persimmons, I think they're... It's California, right? California grows... Yeah, we had those organic persimmons from California when I was in Seattle. Damn, those were bomb. They actually grow in Seattle, though. I was surprised my neighbor had a persimmon tree. Yeah. I really appreciate all the different textures in persimmon too, you know, all the different... You get like kind of different flavor differentials when you're eating them in different stages. It's pretty cool. Passion fruit? Yes. I really I really started to like the sweet one, the, the yellow variety, Grenadilla. Uh, it's like more thick, it's not as juicy and like more sweet. And if you mix them together, oh my god, next level. I was getting them for free in Bali. I was foraging them every day because like seven of them felt like fall every day to the to the ground when they're ripe. 
But when they get soft and shriveled, that's when you want them. They get like super juicy and like concentrated flavor. I think I missed one. Whenever you come to Iran, you are my guest. Travel to Iran is very cheap and convenient. Thank you, Mustafa. That's so nice. Yeah, man, coconut milk. I wonder if they have a blender here. Could go for some of that. I don't really do well with the beat, though, anymore. Yeah, people with the persimmons, you can get them like super cheap or like for free sometimes because like produce markets will just throw them out because they can't sell them because they're so delicate, you know? That's the thing with tree ripe fruit too, like can't ship that shit. Especially pineapples. As soon as you get a ripe pineapple, you got to eat it within one, two days. It's off. I don't know. There's really good, like, I like about an apple texture too, or like in between apple and squishy, like not too squishy, but like almost like a peach like consistency. Ooh, that's like my favorite. I don't like the the high chia variety though, the, the oblong one. The fuyu is the, is the one I like. The high chia is the one you gotta wait super long for it to get ripe, and sometimes they don't ripen. And you gotta like, you can't eat the skin. Do I like rambutan? Are you kidding me? That's like my favorite juicy fruit. It's like strawberry juice grapes. Delicious. Yeah, you know that in-between stage? Those persimmons is popping. Yeah, I'm still waiting for rambutan season to start here. It probably comes with durian, like in the next week or two. Oh my god, it's been so long. Or no, I found some here like a couple weeks ago, but it was off season. So they weren't like the best best, but... Yeah, Borneo has the best rambutan. Last year I had these, uh, they're like a yellow rambutan variety with pink, pink hairs coming off. We were foraging them in the jungle here. They were the most amazing thing ever. Like, they tasted like pink lemonade. The rambutans. I was like, what the fuck? We just picked them right off the tree and just, oh my god. Can't wait to do that. That is like the number one fruit experience of life. Is like foraging fruits in Borneo. You gotta do it one day. Before these fruits go extinct. A lot of these fruits, people don't eat them. There's no demand, and the jungle's dying. The jungle relies on orangutans and a lot of species that are dying because of palm oil. So sad. Less than 10,000 orangutans left in the world. Just because of our commodity needs. We need some cheap oil cook our chicken and our vegetables and whatever. Fry us up some potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Please stop using palm oil. Please stop supporting that industry. It's just, it's just so sad. We don't need palm oil. You can get it from olives if you really need it, hemp seed, other vegetables, corn, whatever. Yeah, save the orangutans. Oh my goodness.
It's okay, Julie. Everything happens for a reason, right? I watched some more Game of Thrones on season four, episode three. Oh, we were just talking about palm oil. How uh, the forest is dying here in Borneo. Less than 10,000 orangutans because of people's oil needs. Stuff like that. There are some projects going around. Uh, trying to save, replant uh, deciduous fruit trees, try to get the wildlife back. The the toucan here is going extinct. You know the proboscis monkey, the orangutan, lots of other creatures in the jungle here. It's one of the last, like, jungles, like, truly wild jungles with life, you know? Just wiping about everywhere. Because they know that trees and humans are connected. We have a symbiotic relationship. We can't survive without trees. And trees can't survive without us how it goes but we're not dispersing seeds we're not planting enough trees and that's why we're sick in this world that's why the earth is you know downward spiral but yeah any more questions let's get off the palm oil talk if you guys have any questions drop them down below I might just end it Might go take another shower. So friggin' hot. I'm 24. It's funny, I've been telling people I was 23 this whole year. I was like, oh, I'm actually 24. Whoops. I don't even know. Honestly. Paul Boyle? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because I'm like, next, or in July I'll be 25. Holy shit. That's like old to me. Like 24, you know, it's like, you know, mid 20s, but it's like 25, you're like, oh my god. It's halfway to 30. I mean, you know, you know what I mean. <sighs> Been resting a lot these past few days. It's like avoiding these full moon energies and the Mercury retrograde shit. Like, just working on my own my own shit going inward just really doing resting trying to spend some time away from the phone <laughs> and just like really sit with myself sit in the sun oh my god I wish I could sit in the sun longer without like turning into a tomato but I think I'll get there like gradually Cause it's so freaking intense here, the UV index. Oh god, I gotta poop. I gotta poop, you guys. So much papaya today. What's my job? Oh gosh, such a complicated question. I'm working at a hostel right now. I don't get paid. Uh, it's like a volunteer work trade thing. 
So I get a room to stay here for free uh, as long as I'm working like the five days a week, uh, seven hours a day. But they're like pretty lenient, you know? I could just like leave early if there's no check-ins or whatever. Like sometimes there's no check-ins and I'm just like, can I go? And they're like, bye. Um, so yeah, I'm doing this right now. Uh, working on a book. I'm almost done writing my first book. Really excited about it. I've been working on it for seven months. Uh, I do health coaching. Uh, for people interested in uh, getting healthier through a diet. Losing some weight. Juice fasting. Stuff like that. Uh, yeah. YouTuber. Those are my jobs. Not really any source of income right now. I'm still traveling off of savings from my job uh, back home. When I left uh, 16 months ago. Yeah. Just, you know, typical minimum, minimum wage job. I saved up for four years, living a very minimalistic lifestyle. And got enough money to travel for as long as I have. Anyone can, anyone can do it. You just got to put your mind to it. Southeast Asia is incredibly cheap. Cheaper than living in the States. Cheaper than living in the UK. So, yeah. Come check it out. I live for like $300 a month. 400 sometimes. Sometimes $100 a month. <laughs> You know, it depends on how you want to travel. You can do it very uh, inexpensive. If I was a fruit, like based on looks, based on like my favorite fruit, because I don't know, man. I'd say Champadec. Yeah, because I'm really sweet. And, uh, messy. <laughs> Any other questions? A few more seconds. Alright, well, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Peace and love. Good night. Good day, everybody.